Hello friends! This last weekend, yeah it was Saturday so it was weekend, I went to the Shasta Renaissance and Fantasy Fair. And I know unboxing slash I bought videos tend to do well, so I figured I'd share what I got. Without further ado, let's get into it. As a quick reminder, if you have been enjoying my content, leave a like, follow, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. It really helps me out. Rather than any particular order of type of item or, I don't know, I'm just going to go through order of which I purchased them. Those who've been following me for a while know I can... <laughs> I almost can't leave an event without finding some sort of tarot deck or oracle deck that I wish to purchase. This was no different. So I purchased this oracle, the Celtic Tree Oracle. I have not done a reading with it yet because I just unboxed it. Um, I, I kind of opened it and looked a little bit while at the fair, but... I uh, have not done a reading yet, so sometime in the next week I will be doing a reading from this as one of my daily cards. And keeping on the theme of tarot and oracles, I also got these two necklaces. Uh, one is the Magician and the other is the Fool, which I are another type of item that I don't seem to be able to leave events without having purchased because, oh man, my necklace collection has gotten pretty extensive. The next item I found, which is a bit more fragile, is this fox skull. And I haven't... This is the first bone that I've purchased. There are several animal spirits, animal allies, I suppose I could say, that have presented themselves to me, that talk to me a lot. Fox is one of them. And at first I had walked completely past them and just kind of felt a tug of, I'm sitting here. Come find me, please. And so I went back and looked through them more closely. And this specimen in particular caught my attention. And what's funny is it's not the... I shouldn't say funny. What's interesting to me is it's not the most perfect specimen that was there. But it has character. Uh, if you look close on the sides, you'll see that there is damage to both of the cheekbones. They've both uh, been broken a little bit. Uh, we are missing one of the canine teeth, because uh, on the other side, it's there. Um, and if you turn it upside down, um, I don't know if I'll be able to film that. There, there's also some damage internally. Uh, to where the, sp not the spine, um, the, the top of the mouth. So I'm looking forward to working with them, experimenting, doing some, some workings. They have a lot of character. And we're going to gently put them down. Uh, the next booth that I found things at Oh boy, did I spend a lot of money at that booth. Um, <laughs> because uh, another animal spirit that I interact with a lot is owls. <laughs> and it's just so shiny. So I, I really, I couldn't resist even though I, I spent, well, they did give me a discount. So I did get it cheaper than what they were originally listing it as. Actually, the, the owner of this booth was very cool. Um, he does 
wire wrap jewelry. I don't remember where his card is. Um, but this is not an advertisement. This is just sharing what I bought. Uh, so, hashtag not sponsored. <laughs> and one of the other things that I got from that same booth is this Medusa pendant. Or, not so much pendant, but um, stone. And she is made out of the same stone as the owls. And they had like four or five different varieties of depictions of Medusa. This is the only one that really appealed to me. It had a different... This one has a more contemplative emotion to her face rather than others that were designed to be more angry. This was the one that was calm. And... I like calm things. And because I spent so much money, uh, they, they threw in a stone for free, which I need to do more research about, because this is the first time I've encountered them. They are called Prophecy Stones. They have a uh, very pointy structure. They are a semi-metallic stone. Um, a lot of uh, ferrous compounds, so iron iron type, um, like I said, I haven't done a lot of research into this yet because it's the first time I've, I've seen them, but from what the vendor told me, they are a lot of iron-based compounds that would eventually turn into, uh, it, it's a transitional stage between one type of stone and another. Also, there, according to what I was told, I still need to verify this, uh, only found in the Sahara Desert. So I will be doing some research on that one. But it's a very cool stone. Uh, it's got a lot of texture and... It feels... It has a higher frequency than I typically expect from just a stone, if that makes sense. Um, holding on to it, there is a, a feeling of anticipation. So I, I definitely need to research more about it and, and learn what to use it for and how to use it. And then the last thing or I should say things, because it is a pair, are these two dragons. And I deliberately bought a pair. They were sold separately because that way I have two guardians to put on the side of workings to keep things. Keep a watchful eye on things if I'm not able to devote my full attention to it. So, in addition to talking about what I bought, I figured it would be a good opportunity to talk about how I cleanse the objects and prepare the objects I buy for metaphysical work, for folk healing. I will use one of the necklaces. Um, I, already, I already did one uh, because I immediately put the magician on at the, the fair, so I, I did a quick and dirty cleansing of it while I was there, which is easier to do because these are made out of metal. So I'll just, I guess, do an example because I haven't done this. Um, I wash them in water, running water preferably. I'll just wrap the chain around my hand so I can hold it comfortably and I will address the object. And I will, yeah, I'll just, I'll just do it in front of you and, and you'll see what I mean. Having purchased this object, it is now mine. Being the steward of this object, I dedicate it to its purpose. As my pendant, I dedicate it to the act of 
watcher and protector, embodying the energy of the image engraved upon it, that of the fool. Energies of transition, of beginnings, of optimism. I dedicate you to this purpose. As above, so below, so mote it be. I do this in a variety of ways. That is the more pagan way that I do things. <laughs> I also do things because I, I, as a folk healer, I'm very eclectic. I do a lot of things with Christian-based beliefs, and I do a lot of things with a more nature's path kind of things. I have studied a lot of different techniques, and that's that's kind of how it goes. For the stones, I will run them over, or under, not over, run them under running water, because these ones are all water safe. And then I will um, dedicate them in a similar way. Editing Eerie here to <laughs> finish up, because the rest of that file got corrupted. So, long story short. I was saying the various stone pieces I would run in, put in running water, and then dedicate to their specific purposes. Uh, the owl will end up on my air altar. The medusa will end up being dedicated to protective purposes because she has the ability to set things in stone to solidify them particularly the ability to halt attackers in in their assault. And uh, the dragons will be dedicated to be used as watchers of rituals and things so that they can be placed on either side, either facing in to make sure whatever was conjured doesn't cause problems, or facing out to make sure there's no outside interference. And with that, um, thank you for watching, and hope to see you next time. Walk in the light, my friends.